This is the Improv Chronicle podcast. I'm Lloydie. It's Tuesday, 12th January 2021. And as we get close to the 10 month mark of most live improv shows around the world pausing, I was interested to explore what was working online. And one thing I found interesting was the amount of short form improv being performed. Some improvisers have taken their short form shows online and adapted them. Others have decided to move from long form to short form as they feel it suits the online medium better. I've seen people be sniffy in both directions about which form is better or works. And so I wondered, is this now breaking down barriers between diehard long formers and short formers? I am Kayla Parker. I am the marketing director for the Alternative Comedy Theatre in Dallas. Um, I both act in improv and teach improv. Um, I've been doing improv for about uh, 10 years now. And your musical team has the best name. <laughs> I take no credit for it too. It got it was created before I even um, joined the group. But uh, yeah, Sondheimlich Maneuver. It's it's a tough one to say, uh, but we we hold it dear to our hearts. <laughs> oh, but it's worth saying Sondheimlich Maneuver. I'm, I'm super jealous of that improv team name. <laughs> Um, so what advantages do you think short form has when it comes to online performance? Cause we're talking kind of short form versus long form online. What, what do you think short form's got? Yeah. So, um, I think the thing on with all online performances, especially live, well, live performances, cause improv is live. I think if you take that away from it, you just become a strange sort of sketch show. Um, so we were, we've been trying to figure out what it means to do improv online. And the thing you have to remember for us or for us to remember would be that, when you're online, you're skipping around a lot. So people don't stick to one website for too long or they don't stick to one like article for too long. They're constantly moving and changing and scrolling and flipping and opening a new tab. And short form lends itself to that sort of audience better. Um, They can come in 15 minutes into the show and not feel like they've lost um, the plot somewhere. Um, They uh, can join in at that point. Um, Engagement is really important. Um, People don't go online to just watch most of the time. They like having that extra interaction we found. So um, stopping the show in intervals to get feedback from the audience or to ask get asks fors um, we found has kept people watching longer. And keeping people watching longer is something that's been on the mind of Sean Mason from Comedy Sports in Manchester, UK. I think really it's down to attention spans and... I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just think the way we engage with online content is different. I think long form improv is great for a podcast on a commute. But I think when you're watching it on a device, whether it's um, uh, through an online platform or you're streaming to YouTube so you can cast it onto your TV, whatever, it needs to be something that just keeps the audience engaged and is constantly changing. It's not the same thing for too long. And just, I think the other difference as well, as certainly we found with our shows, we've done over a hundred short form online shows uh, as comedy sports at this point. And with each one, what we learned is you've got to keep the chat active. You've got to keep engaged with the chat. And that's, that's been really fun. Um, and so different. Like we're wondering what it's going to be like when we go back to live shows, when suddenly are the audience going to try and chat to us? And I don't know, goes, no, no live. You have to stay, you have to stay quiet. But we, that back and forth, I think is the key thing. Whereas long form, is hey we need a suggestion okay cool you just you just watch now kayla agrees the back and forth is an important aspect too fast pace and interaction like that's kind of what short form allows you to get um you're allowed to go quicker so keeping people um engaged that way like uh constantly changing up what's happening on the screen um as well as constantly keeping them engaged by asking them for things and asking for feedback and asking for comments um and that tends to be the thing that gets people to um, want to come back and watch again. And honestly, it's it's nice for us. We like talking with our friends that we can't see in person <laughs> online um, via improv. 
When it comes to short form, there's one person who I grew up watching on TV who I was very keen to talk to. If in doubt, get the opinion of one of your heroes. Uh, this is Colin Mockery, uh, international comedy icon, best known for whose line is it anyway? You are an icon. Um, oh, enough people, they start believing it. With improv having moved performance-wise almost entirely online now, um, I'm just wondering what advantages you think short form can bring to online performance that maybe long form can't. Um, I th well, um, Brad Sherwood and I, who've been touring for uh, 18 years, when all this happened, I don't know if you've been reading the papers, but stuff's been going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we decided we would uh, do our um, stage show uh, virtually. And then uh, we did a couple of um, shows for friends and family, poor souls. And we realized uh, fairly quickly that because of the medium, when you put things on a screen, everyone's attention span shrinks almost immediately. So we realized, uh, you know, when we're doing our, our live stage shows, you know, our scenes can go on for 10, 15, 20 minutes. We couldn't do that on Zoom because people's minds start to wander. Their cats try to get into the room or whatever. So I'm familiar uh, with that one. <laughs> so we, sh we shortened everything and that, that seems to work out for us best. And, um, uh, with the exception recently, actually, on Netflix of Middleditch and Schwartz, most TV improv uh, on a screen has been short form as well. Um, what is it that, that short form has that long form doesn't in that respect? What's, what's, what's the thing? Um, well, I think from the improviser's point of view, uh, a scene can really suck. And then you can go on to the next one. Everyone forgets about it. And you, you start something new. Uh, in long form, if you're going down a, a bad avenue, the narration gets a little um, mixed up. You're kind of stuck with that for the next however long, finding a way to sort of get back on track. It, it's much easier that way, I find. And having said that, I've, I've done a lot of uh, successful long forms uh, on um, on Zoom. Uh, I, I did one a couple of months ago that was a Dungeons and Dragons uh, a long form, which was a lot of fun and something I absolutely know nothing about. I have no D&D &D experience, but it, it, I think part of the fun was watching me trying to make my cleric fly or do things that he wasn't allowed to do and getting constantly uh, berated by the dungeon master. There's nothing like a strict dungeon master, but I digress. What can long-form performers learn from short-form, both online and more generally? Sean Mason. Well, the interesting thing with comedy sports, if, if you've not seen a comedy sports show, it is two teams competing for your laughs, and there's a referee, and at the end, a winner is decided. And it's a short-form show, but we kind of think of it, weirdly, as a long-form show in that it has a narrative arc, it starts, there's games, there's a winner, uh, so there is a trajectory to it. And I think the key thing is, is, is just finding games and being playful. And I think the hardest thing with long form online is that your connection is different. Um, I think our connection to the audience, like I, I said, is, is now a very different thing. But your connection to players is, it's not hampered, but it's strained by... Okay, do I? How can I make eye contact with you, without eye lines being all over the place? Or do I look down the the camera and and what what's the uh, what's the framing? You've got to think of it in terms of not just a your normal theatrical sense, but I think there's an element of almost cinematic sense of okay, how how do I use this frame and. It's game. Yeah, it's just finding the game. And that was a really long-winded answer that went <laughs> in different ways. But it's just been playful and um, keeping it engaging. Don't forget the audience. I mean, that's the key thing. Just don't forget the audience. And Kayla has a great perspective on what long-form performers can get from short-form. Well, okay, so when you get into long-form, there's a few things that you start learning about improv that um, I think most people get started in short-form. I don't know if that's universal, but I know I got started in short-form because you got to learn the rules to break the rules. And I think long-form tends to break some of those initial rules that you learn, like um, uh, don't start conflict too quickly. Um, uh, things like that. Um, 
I think people who kind of live and breathe long form can sometimes look at short form as like always the point of the scene is always to get to the joke as opposed to the point of the scene is to explore the characters or explore the conflict or explore um, the story that you're creating, um, which can seem a little flippant, uh, like just to get the joke, get to the punchline, make, make someone laugh. Um, I think they miss out on the fact that uh, short form requires a whole different type of set of skills sometimes um, and can be really bridge that gap from people who don't know a lot about theater um, to bring them into the community. Uh, I mean, we were talking about whose line is it anyway before um, we got onto the recording. And that's, I mean, that's how I found out about improv. That's what I thought improv was when I was young. Um, and I loved that show. Uh, Same. And I am now a hardcore fan of long form improv. So, um, so I think it's a great gateway um, format. Um, and I think it does require just a slightly different part of your brain to do. Um, so I, I, think, I think people who look down on it should take a second glance at short form. Whenever I do too much long form improv and I feel like I'm in a rut or I've got the yips, um, I go back to doing short form um, just to like switch up my brain chemistry uh, and and then um, I come out of it a better and better improviser every single time. I, I think in, in long form, you can actually use the short form uh, format. I mean, of course, you have the longer narrative, you have an arc, but also within every scene you're doing with someone, you can go, OK, in this scene, I'm going to do a status thing where I'm going to make my status higher than this person and have within the long form, you can have short form games that don't disrail or derail um, what you're actually trying to do. I know when Who's Line was, was happening, especially when it was happening in the States, there was a lot of sort of backlash against it because, and, and I understood it in a way in that um, it, it goes against some of the things you're not supposed to do in improv. It's, you know, it's jokey, uh, it, it's fast, but we had to do that because of the medium. We couldn't take, you know, five minutes setting up our characters and having uh, everything had to be quick and and fast. I, I sort of likened it to it's sort of improv vaudeville. It was just sort of it sort of opened. It was a, a gateway drug to other kinds of improv. Um, so I and I uh, really uh, enjoyed doing Who's Line, uh, always had fun doing it. And it's. I think what people didn't understand, it's really hard. <laughs> a lot of people think, well, yeah, it's short form. You have to be funny. It, it's very hard to do two, three minute um, scenes that will end up being on air. And of course, the more we did it, the more we found ways of getting around that or just doing it. So it, it worked. But I think people really underestimated um, how difficult it was. We had some amazing improvisers who had trouble with it because the pace was so quick. Everything had to be, uh, as opposed to, a, you know, a joke every uh, minute. It was like a joke every 15 seconds. And some people uh, couldn't do it. The idea of snobbery around an art form is something I find a bit weird. I understand preference. I certainly have my own stylistic preferences, but snobbery is something I find destructive. So I asked Sean why he thought there was snobbery from long form performers about short form. Oh, there's there's loads of reasons that people give. Like some people will say short form is for an audience and long form is for improvisers. Which I don't think is entirely fair, but I I see what they're trying to say in terms of Short form is just about that that endorphin hit and that quick, yay, gags, games. Um, yeah, we're going to do great scene work and we're going to connect and we're going to do all that stuff. But really it's about hitting the laugh. Whereas long form tends to be inherently funny. I think improv just naturally lends itself towards humour. But there is that, like you say, it's that more theatrical, artistic, uh, worthy nature, which I mean, personally, I think is nonsense, but um, to differentiate the two, I think you need both skills to improvise because we're always talking about the game and what the game is and the game of a scene or the actual forward verse game or whatever. 
And we're still looking for those patterns and those things that we can play with. And those skills resonate in, in both forms. So, yeah, I, I think it just comes from a slightly more actory, I'm doing something of value position, but it's it's all the same thing. Kayla is a long-form performer who's moved back into short form for online. And for her, it's been a real joy. I got dragged kicking and screaming back into this short form game. And uh, I I had I had like an ups and downs throughout um, doing this online short form. You get to a point where you feel like you're kind of yelling into a void at, at some times when you have low numbers or um, you like not a lot of people are watching. You just sort of... Um, you feel really alone at times. I did at least in the fall. Uh, and then I had to remember why we were doing this. Um, and I think we've kind of loosened up uh, a bit more in how we do our shows. Uh, we're not trying to make them highly produced. We're not trying to make it seem as if we know what we're doing at all times. Technology fails. <laughs> um, uh, you know, like dogs bark in the background. We're all at home trying to do this. And I think once we all realize that that it's okay, it's okay. Like that's okay. Like all of that is okay. Um, we've really found the joy for it again. Um, and at least I have. I can't speak for everyone in my theater. Um, but yeah, so now we're kind of doing some fast and loose short form improv, and I think we're having a blast. Finally, Colin Mockery, although widely known for his short form improv, performs both short and long form. So I wondered, does he have a preference of the two? I mean, I have no, I, I truly have no preference over uh, short form or long form. I mean, I've, I've been very fortunate in that I've made my career from short form, but I've, I've, uh, been involved in a lot of great long form uh, formats, whether it was D and D, as I mentioned, or um, there's a group in uh, Toronto. We would do one act plays. We get a play right from the audience, talk to them for a little while, and then do a one act play. And what I loved about th those uh, particular kinds of improvs was the fact that uh, people would leave scenes, which doesn't happen in short form as much as it should. So you go, oh, uh, I, I can have this scene with this person. Someone will enter and then, well, my job is done. There's nothing I can add. I can actually leave and everything will be fine. Um, so, I mean, there's certainly uh, pros and cons to, to both types of, of improv, but it ultimately comes down to the improv. It has to be good. It has to be engaging. Next time on the Improv Chronicle podcast. Adapting the online space. No one expected us to still be sheltering at home and not be back in theatres in 2021, but here we are. And just as our art form adapted by going online, online shows are now adapting with the technology. The Improv Chronicle podcast is produced and hosted by me, Lloydy James Lloyd. You can help the podcast right now. Subscribe and rate us on your favourite podcast app and find out more about previous episodes, including transcripts, at our website, improvchronicle.com. Improv